What's up, everybody? Andrew Mahone here with Tricky Jim at Full Grip Games. I've been participating in a 2017 retro format tournament hosted by Pokestats. It's been a ton of fun to participate in. Last we left off, I was 5-0 heading into the sixth round of Swiss with a 5-0 record. I was able to intentionally draw my sixth and seventh rounds to get myself a record of 5-0-2, guaranteeing myself a place in top eight. In top eight, I'm going to be facing off against Jonathan Rodriguez with his Drampa GX Garbador deck featuring Espeon GX and of course I am playing my Zorark Break Drampa GX deck. Now I've played against Espeon Garb in the tournament already so far and had a pretty convincing win against it so I'm confident heading into this top eight match but Jonathan's list plays a lot heavier of a Drampa count than I think my previous Espeon Garb's opponent did. So Drampa GX can always be stressful to play against since it's Berserk Attack can just get out the gates quickly dealing 150 to 180 damage as early as turn two. I'm contemplating here whether to drop the Oracorio. I decide to just go ahead and place it down. Now, playing against a Trashlands Garbodor deck, I do have to be wary of placing item cards down, tool cards down, things like that, because Trashlands does more damage for the amount of item cards that I have in my discard pile. As you can see, I decide to hold the choice band here just in case Jonathan has a field blower in his opening hand, but I don't get an energy attachment down. So I do wish that, you know, in hindsight, that I had maybe attached to darkness energy or something like that, but I was really holding on to hope that I would find a Drampa GX so that I could get a turn one energy drop on a Drampa, much like Jonathan was able to do on the first turn of the game over on his side. Now, I've got an interesting hand here. I could just Sycamore the whole thing. I've got Bridget, uh, another Zerua, a double colorless energy, and a Drampa. Now, Jonathan is going to want to limit his bench size, much like I'm going to want to limit the amount of items I put into the discard pile. Jonathan is not going to want to bench too many Pokemon as uh, to not power up my Mind Jack attack. Now, this is actually an amazing hand to Sycamore away because there's no items in it, so it's fantastic. But I failed to find a Zorark off of the Professor Sycamore, so it kind of stings a little bit. I did get an energy drop onto his Rua, but fortunately, I don't have any items played so far. If I take a look at the discard pile, uh, really just the floatstone, I can retreat into Oracorio, and I think that this is a safe promotion for me. I don't want my Zeruas to take any sort of damage. If he knocks out the Oracorio, I can use teammates to go and get myself a Zorak, and getting the double colorless energy dropped onto the Zerua is very good because each energy drop is going to be very significant in this matchup, especially since Drampa GX takes two energies in order to get powered up. And we see Jonathan has to drop a second double colorless energy onto his Drampa GX, which I'm pretty excited about. Having two DCEs on Drampa means the Tapu Lele GX can hit Drampa for even bigger numbers. It also means that he's not going to have a second double colorless energy for, you know, uh, he's not going to have an extra double colorless energy, maybe for a Tapu Lele of his own or for Espeon GX uh, or for another Drampa, right? Uh, having to use two double colorless on a Drampa there is uh, not a perfect scenario for Jonathan, so I'm excited to see that. Now, we do see that he's playing the Team Magma's secret base and does find a field blower, so you can see why I'm being uh, very cautious with my tool drops here did not place any of those choice bands down but because of the team magma secret base which he was able to use to place damage on his own tapu lele gx he then field blowered it away so that i could not use it to power up my own drampa gx now something that plays to jonathan's advantage here is if i do decide to use righteous edge on this drampa gx it means that he's already got the double colorless energy on the drampa and does not need to worry about finding another one. If he just finds a basic energy, he will be able to Berserk again. Now, I'm very afraid of the Drampa GX. It's swinging for 180 damage right now with that choice ban. And as we can see, Jonathan's got the nice swagged out Drampa GX from Hidden Fates, the shiny one. I just have my full art Drampa GX, which uh, is means a lot to me because I played a full art Drampa GX at the 2017 North American International Championships, the format that this tournament is actually modeled after, but the new Hidden Fates Drampa is pretty sick. Now, I'm going to teammates and just get myself two Zorks to evolve these up. I have an N in my hand, and I'm going to get the energy drop onto the Drampa, stand in, and swing into this Drampa GX with my Zork. This is a good play here. Choice Band giving me a little bit of extra oomph with the attack as well. 
And I could play the Team Magma Seeker base down. I decide to just because if Jonathan benches any other Pokemon, I'm going to want them to take that 20 damage. It really helps to fix the math on Zorak's Mind Jack attack, especially against Garbodors who have 120 HP. If a Trubbish takes 20 damage and I Mind Jack for 100, if Jonathan has three benched Pokemon, then that 20 damage fixes the math on Garbodor so that I can knock out a Garbodor if it takes Team Magma's secret base damage if Jonathan only has three benched Pokemon. So the math there does really matter with Mind Jack. It helps soften up Pokemon just so that uh, Mind Jack can hit those key numbers, kind of in the same way that Professor Kakui helps to fix Mind Jack's numbers as well, because Jonathan's going to try to limit his bench. It's the name of the game. And it's this really odd scenario to be in because Tapu Lele GX was just released with the, you know, with the start of this format, Guardians Rising, right? It's the newest set for this 2017 North American International Championships format that we are playing. So Tapu Lele GX is everywhere. It's one of the best cards in the format, but it takes up a bench spot, which is part of the reason why Zorak is so good for this format because Many decks rely on Tapu Lele GX, have to put the Tapu Lele GX into play, and the Zorg's Mind Jack can punish it. Now, I could just Righteous Edge this Drampa for knockout. With the Choice Band attached, Righteous Edge does 50, has 130 damage on it, so that does check out. I do have a Darkness Energy in my hand as well as an N. I can N and go for something else, or I could just say that uh, I'll get the guaranteed energy drop on the Zorg, which I do like. I did find a double colorless energy, which is fine. I could have taken this knockout with a stand in, but the guaranteed knockout on the active Drampa was fine. Now I could also Ultra Ball here, which it looks like I might decide to do. Ultra Ball, get myself a Zorak Break, and I could stand in, take the knockout with Zorak Break. And I think I like that play more. I saved the Drampa GX on my bench with a double colorless energy in hand, ready to go. So the Zorak break at the ready. I'm going to leave myself with not a lot of cards in hand, but I do have the energy and a rescue stretcher in my hand that I can use to potentially evolve up another Zorak that is in my discard pile. So I could potentially do that this next turn, or I could always get Shaman or instruct a Ranguru if I decide that I want to do that. But something else that I have to look out for in this matchup is... The fact that Jonathan can set up the ability lock Garbodor, right? He can set up Garbotoxin. He's already got a Trubbish on his field with a Floatstone on. All he needs is that Garbotoxin Garbodor. We see he's got one in the discard pile right now, and he could evolve that up and lock us out of abilities. Now, something that I have found with this matchup is that a lot of times the Garbotoxin is just as paralyzing for the Drampa Garb deck as it is for the Drampa Zorak deck. I mean, both decks rely on Tapu Lele GX's Wonder Tag to kind of keep the supporters flowing throughout the game. Both decks, um, yeah, really, really want that ability. So it can turn into the situation with Garbodor up where end to low is actually just very powerful because those Ultra Balls do not get to grab Tapu Lele GX for Wonder Tag. As we see, Jonathan opted to use Tapu Lele GX to Wonder Tag this turn, and I find an Ultra Ball and a Choice Band. Now imagine this is the exact scenario I was talking about. Imagine he evolves into a Garbodor, but actually fails to find anything, has to go for the Acid Spray and flips a tail. So I am in a wonderful spot here. He doesn't want to bring his Espeon GX into the active position, fails to find uh, any sort of better option here and tries to go for the Acid Spray with the Trubbish, ending himself to just four cards. I only have a few items in the discard pile at this point, so if I decide to play out of this hand, then I'm committing to having a good number of items in my discard pile, but I don't really have any great options here with no double colorless energy on a Zorark and no Drampa fully powered up. I can't actually aggress on this Trubbish. If I use Foul Play to copy Acid Spray, I'm not really doing anything. So I have to grab myself Tapu Lele GX and decide to just play out of this hand, committing to a lot more items in the discard pile, but I have the 
advantage of momentum at this point. I'm just going to grab Professor Sycamore, draw through the next seven cards, and try to get some more Pokemon set up, try to get some more energy attached, use my abilities, use stand in and pivot while I can. Also, if I get the knockout on this Trubbish, I guarantee that Jonathan will not be able to set up that Garbotoxin Garbodor this next turn since he doesn't have an additional Trubbish on his side of the field. Now, let's see, I got one Flowstone. I didn't scroll past. I think I have a handful of items in the discard pile at this point, maybe like seven or so, uh, maybe five to seven. Now, I do have a double colorless energy and a bunch of energy. This is really all I need. At this point, I have got wait, one, two, three, four, five, five in the discard pile. So that's good. The Garbodor can deal 100 damage, but of course, I do have a psychic resistance on the Zork. However, 100, you know, minus the 20, 80, uh, this Garbodor is going to be taking a knockout on my Zork. Even with the resistance, looks like I have six items in the discard pile since it dealt 100 damage. So now I have six in the discard pile. Garbodor dealing 120 damage, 150 to a EX or GX because of the choice band. And I do find a Versus Seeker. I also have a Lysander. So I'm going to want to utilize those to find myself an out to knock out this Garbodor. I definitely want to knock out the Garbodor. I could go teammates here. Teammates gets me guaranteed energy, but um, I would just need to take the knockout with the Dramp, 150 damage to the Garbodor, and then all I would need is to just Lysander a Tapu Lele and finish the game off with Berserk. That is a potential route. I got the Lysander in my hand already. Teammates feels correct. Just go teammates, get myself the double colorless energy that I need in order to Berserk, and I'm going to grab the other Versus Seeker as well. That's awesome, just in case something crazy happens. Uh, I teammates. Oh, and actually, yeah, I could just trash a ledge here. This is amazing. He's got enough item cards in his discard pile. I'm just going to go in with Zorak Break, copy his own trash lance, use it against him. I've got the Drampa GX just waiting here on the bench. Lysander in hand versus Seeker in hand. I've got a bunch of different ways to concoct a wing condition next turn with both of his Tapu Lele GXs having 20 damage on them. They only have 150 hit points remaining, meaning even if Jonathan were to use Field Blower and get rid of my Choice Band on the Drampa GX, I could still Berserk for 150 damage and would take a knockout on Tapu Lele. So I'm confident here we're going to be taking this game. Zorak breaks just so beefy with 140 HP and those Psychic Resistances make for some really potent non-GX attackers. And then with Drampa just sitting here uh, in weights, it's just uh, an amazing board position that I have here. And he has to use Hex Maniac and pass. And I just uh, I just have game. If I can find a way to retreat the Zork, I have game. But I don't actually have a great way to retreat. So I'm going to take a look. Uh, knocking out the Tapu Lele would be, you know, fantastic. That would be a way to end the game. So I do have a way to retreat. I could just stand in with my bench Zorak and, and retreat. So I don't know why I can't. Oh, we used Hex. I cannot stand in. That's it. So yes, there's no, no abilities. I cannot stand in and retreat. I'm actually kind of stuck in the active position here. And I think I just decided to use the Professor Sycamore in my discard pile with Versus Seeker to dig for the game-winning energy. If I can just find one of these four energy in my deck, I can retreat my active Zork, and we will be able to take game. So I'm going to use the Sycamore. It's a weird turn. I have Lysanders. I have enough damage to knock out the active, but... I just have to put the energy there, retreat into Drampa GX, and we've got Berserk for a game. GG's to Jonathan. Moving on to game two of our top eight match. Game two, Jonathan is going to choose to go first. Opens Tapu Lele GX to my Zerua, and I've got a playable opening hand, which is really all I can ask for here. Just looking to keep that momentum going. And here he also, I see he plays Delinquent. So I take a look at that. Nice full art Delinquent there. Delinquent is a card to look out for. It reads if you... Uh, if there's a stadium card in play, you discard the stadium card from play, and you can have your opponent discard three cards from their hand, meaning if they have a three-card hand, you can catch them slipping and completely remove their hand. So Delinquent, now in the discard pile, is retrievable with Versus Seeker at any point in the game. So I do have to be wary 
of that uh, of that potential delinquent there and make sure that I don't ever leave myself with just a three card hand in the remainder of the match. Now I got Turtonator GX down now and we've got Oranguru. Turtonator GX using Shell Trap for 50 damage with a choice ban. Not bad at all. Now one of the weird things about opening Turtonator GX against a Garbodor deck is that if they do use their uh, Garbotoxin Garbodor. If they set up Garbotoxin Garbodor, Turtonator GX is kind of stuck. It's got a retreat cost of three, and usually I use Zork's stand-in ability to get Turtonator out of the active. I mean, Turtonator's a great lead. This is a phenomenal lead here. If he comes up and tries to damage my Turtonator, Turtonator uh, places eight damage counters on the attacking Pokemon. That's an absurd amount of damage counters to place for that Shell Trap attack. So it's just uh, a very aggressive opener with the Turtonator. And he's got this Drampa. He's also got 190 HP. And with the damage on the Tapu Lele GX, Drampa is actually missing a knockout on the Turtonator. And I could set up a potential knockout maybe with a Zork. If he benches one more thing, I place eight damage counters with Shell Trap. If he damages my Turtonator GX, I could stand in and just knock out the Drampa. So he's going to wait to try and play around the Turtonator. And this is why Turtonator is just so good in this deck. It helps you buy turns while you manually attach to Drampa, while you set up Zorks. It's just a perfect card to set up behind and can make it so that your opponent really has to think twice about hitting into the Turtonator. Also hits Metal and Grass Pokemon for weakness. Shell Trap for 100 damage base is absolutely insane with the Choice Band. And since we play four Choice Bands in this list, I feel like we always have the Choice Band to use. Now, I'm in a really awkward hand here where I have to Ultra Ball away uh, either another Ultra Ball to get an you know, additional item in the discard pile, which I don't want since I'm playing against Trash Lance Garbodor, or I Ultra Ball away two Darkness Energies. Now, I felt like we do play a healthy amount of Darkness Energies. There's six Darkness in the deck. I think it's five and a rainbow. So there are quite a few Darkness Energies. And we do play a uh, copy of the Special Charge as well so that I can put some more you know energy back into the deck at some point in the game if i do find that i did feel like up until this point i think special charge is a card that i have not really utilized too often i feel like sometimes it ends up getting discarded but it's a nice little insurance to have just in case you end up having to have an ugly sycamore where you discard too many double colorless energy or something like that. It's just like a nice little safety net to have in the deck, though. I feel like more often than not, I'm really just able to place my energy, you know, turn by turn and kind of just tempo through the energy attachments. And you don't really need too many more than what naturally comes in the deck. So decided to just shell trap again there. I don't have a hand that is terribly explosive. I could have retreated using the Float Stone into Drampa GX and use Big Wheel GX, I could. But then I leave Drampa GX in the active, and he's got a fully loaded Drampa on his bench, and now damage on a Tapu Lele GX can easily take a knockout. Now, what I'm afraid of here is if he uses Tapu Lele to go get Lysander. If he uses Tapu Lele GX's Wonder Tag to get Lysander, he's just going to bring up my Drampa, play around my Shell Trap, and just take a clean knockout with his Drampa. And this is the thing that I was the most worried about in this matchup. I'm not terribly worried about Trash Alanche. That's relatively easy to play around and has been so far in our games. I'm not terribly worried about Espeon GX either. A lot of my Pokemon resist Psychic and Espeon GX just doesn't deal that much damage. But Drampa GX is the card that I am scared of. And I'm scared of Drampa GX because of the fact that it could just do 180 damage on turn two, which is a lot of aggression. And if my opponent, Jonathan here, just happens to get the first key knockout with Drampa, that can snowball into some really ugly things, especially since he does not have too many bench Pokemon, just three bench Pokemon. With the Lysander, I already know what's happening. The Float Stone's in the hand. Yo, and here comes Drampa, Berserk for 180 damage. I was definitely worried about this. Turtonator GX is a great opener, but the problem with Turtonator is that it doesn't really ramp into anything else itself. It just places some pressure, but it can never seal the deal, right? I'm going to need to set up Zorks in order to... Uh, in order to seal this game up. I cannot just take knockouts with Turtonator, for the most part, unless I'm playing against a Decidueye deck or something like that. Zork is a good pivot. Now, with the 
Garbodor there, I'm in an even tougher spot because now I know that Turtonator is going to be very hard to move and I do not play Field Blower in my list. I do have a Float Stone in my hand though, so I know that I can eventually retreat the Turtonator if I want to Shell Trap and then move out. I've got N in my hand as well, but Jonathan actually only has a, a hand of three, so I don't necessarily want to N if I don't have to, but I don't actually have any other energy in my hand. So I'm using Professor Kakui and just hoping that I find myself um, another Zork or something like that. If I go with the Choice Band, this is a really aggressive play. I'm going to Shell Trap for 70 damage. It's just not really great math there. I think I should have just held the Choice Band, maybe just gone with the Float Stone instead. 40 damage on the Drampa really softens it up for a potential Zork play the following turn. Now, I think he's going to Lysander again. Go down to two prizes, and we see just how quickly this Drampa GX was able to get out of control. And he's got a second Drampa set up on his bench now, and I'm finding that my potential to win this game is narrowing. I do not think that uh, there are many ways for me to play out of this. However, if there was a way for me to play out, it would involve an end to two, which is definitely what we're about to see. And I need to draw very good off my end to two, which is what I'm hoping for. I've got the float stone for the Oranguru, and then I've got two Zeruas here. I've got a Team Magma Secret Base. Doesn't really do anything at this point. I've got to get through true Drampa GXs. This is a six to two lead. So I'm thinking that my odds of being able to pull this one out are not high. However, if I do go to game three, I'll be able to go first and hopefully I'll get the same kind of momentous start that Jonathan has right here. And I am trying to decide if it's worth it to even bench another Drampa. I decide that I think it is. So I'm going to do that, even though at this point that just means if I miss this knockout, uh, it's going to be Lysander and game for him. But in order to win this game, I have to hit the knockout here. So I completely whiff everything. And I may decide to go up with Drampa and Righteous Edge. That could be a thing. However, that's really bad because then he can Righteous Edge me in return. So this is almost scoop territory. It's just that bad of a scenario. I can't put up the Turtonator because then it can't retreat. But I have to Righteous Edge. I have to do something. But then that means that he could just Righteous Edge me back. And if he Righteous Edges me back, I have a Choice Band on this Drampa now. It's pretty much game over. Uh, I'm, I'm thinking at this point that he does not have a good way to retreat the Drampa, but even if just he keeps, you know, kind of plugging away, dealing a little bit of damage here, 50 damage to my active Drampa, really softens it up and makes it uh, a piece of cake for that bench Drampa to be able to take out. So I think that Jonathan here really just got the quick advantage. Two Drampas built up while I was not able to find a single Zork. That also is something worthy of noting i do not have any zorks in play so it's just been a really slow game for me i opened with turtonator that turn two or so that i really wanted to he decides to go for the big wheel gx i actually disagree with this play a hundred percent this actually opens up a uh, a door for me to potentially win all he had to do was just righteous edge now i'm going to end him back to two out of the big wheel gx and take a potential knockout on this active which is crazy right so uh, i have an actual route to win this game now with him giving me that he's got an energy on his tapu lele i've got an energy myself i can take this knockout with drampa using berserk of course i do uh damage myself but that drampa on the bench only has two dc on it does not have a choice band so it cannot deal enough damage to knock out my drampa unless he finds a choice band but i'm thinking that the odds of jonathan finding a choice band for game pretty high at this point and i still do not have a zorak in play so we're not feeling super stellar uh about my prospects in this game but we're gonna play on because you never know what could happen. It is the Pokemon trading card game, and uh, we're going to play this to completion, so at least I get an idea of more tricks that Jonathan may have up his sleeve as well as we prepare for a potential game three. But he's taking some time to look at this hand. Uh, I don't know if maybe he's got an energy drop that he's thinking about putting on his Tapu Lele GX. He's already got that fully loaded Drampa. I still have not found a Zork, so I'm hoping that maybe I can end one of these times, find a Zork and a DCE retreat, and put some pressure on with a Zork. If I was going to win this game, I would really want to have 
Zorark Break available to me. He's got the Versa Seeker, so all he has to do is research. If he researches to find a choice band, he might decide that he does not have uh, many choice band left in deck, so just wants to limit my hand instead. And sure enough, here is Zorark finally showing up, and I have a Professor Sycamore too. So I decide if he doesn't have the choice band, decides to go up with his Grandpa GX and Berserk for 150. Uh, he could also kind of checkmate me by just using Righteous Edge. If he uses Righteous Edge, I'm not going to be able to retreat my Drampa GX because it will not have the DCE on it that I need to retreat. And I have no switches in the deck. There's no way to pivot this Drampa GX. So Righteous Edge here is the correct call. And he's setting himself up for a game-winning Berserk next turn. And I am in a situation where I cannot use Stand-In because of the Garbotoxin Garbodor, and I am more or less stuck. I'm going to use that special charge, put the DCE back into the deck, Sycamore, and just see what we get. I find a DCE, but it's just not a good place to be in. He can use that... Uh, he could just use that... I find a DCE. I could actually just... Yeah, we're in a fine spot here. Find the DCE. I could just berserk. I... Could berserk for knockout. Instead, I decided to retreat into Zerua. I don't really know what I'm waiting for here. If I berserk for knockout, I had the damage on my bench Zerua. So, if I berserk for knockout there, I got the choice ban on the Drampa GX. I had damage on my bench Zerua. I am really scratching my head here as to why I didn't just take that knockout. I'm thinking, looking at his, you know, bench Tapu Lele GX, if he went 246, 810, 12. It would have been short on the Tapu Lele GX. I would have just had it. So I don't know what it was about that situation that I was so scared of. I had Berserk for 180 damage. So I am really, really confused about that retreat there. Um, with the three energy on my Drampa, I just had it. And with only 30 damage on me, um, I'm not even in fear of too much retaliation. All I have to do is get through this Drampa GX. So I think I'm just a little bit scared or something, or I'm just like, you know, trying to mount this comeback. And I think I might've just thought myself into uh, a pigeonhole there. And I'm not exactly sure what the rationale was. Surely Jonathan is going to take his knockout here and go down to just one prize rem remaining. And I need to Professor Sycamore and find myself another double colorless so that I can actually berserk and take a knockout on this Drampa. And at this point, I don't have any bench Pokemon with damage on them. I did have, pre I have teammates here, so I can go get myself a bench Pokemon and the DCE. I can berserk, take the knockout on the Drampa GX. And then I just have to Lysander and take a knockout for game. I do have DCE in the deck and I have a bench Pokemon. Looks like I'm looking for Rescue Stretcher. And I have Darkness Energy. Maybe I'm thinking I want to Berserk with Zorark Break. I don't exactly know why I would opt to do that. I guess with Zorark Break, um, maybe I'm counting items in the discard pile as well. But if I take the knockout with Zorark Break, then I can... Uh, I do have a, a Psychic Resistance, but it doesn't really matter. I guess I technically against Trash Lance Garbodor would have just a little bit more HP. So it looks like I'm going in with Zorak Break here, going to foul play and copy that Berserk for 180 damage. Still not sure why I didn't do that last turn with Drampa GX, but uh, we out here now. This is a tournament play, so no take backs. <laughs> just, just cruising with whatever decision I decided to make. Now, Jonathan has Trash Lance Garbodor and the Psychic, and do I have enough items in the discard pile to lose the game? I do. Yes, taking that knockout, 140 Damage dealing 160 Drampa GX would have gotten knocked out as well. Still very much scratching my head as to why I didn't just take that knockout on the Drampa with the DCE while I had it. But we're moving on to game three. I'm going first in game three. I open an awkward hand, but I'm hoping that maybe Jonathan is going to end me out of it. I do have Bridget, so I'm going to be able to get all of my Pokemon into play, which is awesome. I can also use Team Magma's base to get damage on my own Zerua or something like that so that I can potentially get a quick Zork. I really want to be able to capitalize on the momentum of a quick Drampa GX like Jonathan was able to do in the last game. So that's something that uh, I'm looking for here. I get Drampa GX and the Instructor Ranguru. I'm thinking maybe I can use Instructor Ranguru 
to help me draw out of this hand. If it really gets ugly, I decide to put the Team Magma Seeker base down as well, I think, because... I want to be able to inflict that damage on my own Zerua, but I'm also, you know, second guessing it because I don't want Jonathan to be able to inflict damage on his own Pokemon so that he can power up a quick Drampa GX. Now, I think I'm just going to pass here, hold on to the choice band, and I'm not going to play my hand down too, too small because if I do, then Jonathan may decide he does not actually want to end me, and I want Jonathan to end me. Absolutely. Now, N is one of the most popular supporters turn one in this format, so the odds of getting N are pretty high. Uh, most decks are playing four copies of N, and also usually have a lot of resources in your opening hand you don't necessarily want to ditch or get rid of, but he could use Bridget turn one to help set up, get some bench Pokemon. That would be the real fear. Sure enough, here is N, so we're going to get out of this hand, and I've got a great start, except for the fact that I do not have any energy in play. Jonathan, going with the strategy of a small bench, energy on Drampa, and no other bench Pokemon at this point, so... I'm in a weird spot because Mind Jack does nothing. I mean, it's doing 40 damage to this active Trubbish. Mind Jack cannot take a knockout. I can also not take a knockout with Drampa yet since I did not get that turn one energy drop. And I have to use Professor Sycamore to discard an item here, which I'm also not happy about. So this is kind of an ugly Sycamore. Could have been worse, but uh, we do have a Darkness energy. So I can start to power up Drampa, but I don't really have too much to do other than that. And I don't want to bring the Drampa into the active to Big Wheel GX because then I run the risk of potentially getting knocked out by his Drampa on his side of the field. So I'm just going to use Tapu Lele GX and Wonder Tag, grab myself the end preemptively because it is possible for Jonathan to turn off abilities during his next turn with Garbotoxin. So I'm going to want to look out for that and we go grab the end so that I have a supporter, even if he locks abilities next turn with Garbotoxin, I have an out to draw some more cards. Now, you may just opt to end again, and that's what it looks like. It's fine. You know, the Tapu Lele GX being on the bench is not really that big of a deal. And I'm going to, as you saw, I didn't play any of those item cards or tool cards because I don't want them to get field blowered. So the ideal situation is that every time Jonathan uses a field blower, he only gets to discard one Pokemon tool. Now, if he gets two Pokemon tools, he boosts his own Trash Lance damage output by 40 every time he uses it. So uh, we're going to try and stagger our tool drops so that he only gets so much damage buff out of those field blowers. Now, he's got an energy on Espeon GX, but not too much else going on. I almost have the Lysander knockout if I had just played that Floatstone onto my active Zerua last turn. I would have the Lysander Berserk knockout on his Drampa and really get things kicked off here. But uh, I do not have the Floatstone. I have the Lysanders, I have the energy, I have everything else that I need, but I do not have the Floatstone. So I'm looking at potentially bringing up one of these GXs and just softening up with my Zorak. I think that that would give me some nice momentum here and also would just allow me to two hit KO the GXs, which is fine. I'm um, thinking the Espeon GX could be a nice grab for me. And we're going to go in with the Zork, potentially drop the Choice Band as well and hit for a clean 100 damage with Mind Jack. Leaving it with 80 hit points remaining, should be able to get cleaned up by a another Zork. Uh, especially if I'm able to find a uh, choice ban or if Jonathan benches another Pokemon. Delinquent for three, the hand is gone. That's, yup, we knew the delinquent was in the deck, but, yup, there it goes, and my hand is gone. So now, my worst nightmare is that Jonathan sets up Garbotoxin Garbodor, and I cannot even use my Instructor Rangaroo to draw out of it. So sure enough, Jonathan has the entire combo in his hand, and uses Psychic for Knockout. So my options include Praying for a Top Deck or Big Wheel GX to refill my hand to 10. It is a really sketchy situation to be in. Um, I think I'm just going to go for the Righteous Edge. That's a bold move, but I don't want Jonathan to have the advantage of momentum. So I am just gritting down, and I'm going to Righteous Edge here. I only have one energy in play. Jonathan does not, at this point, removing the DCE. He didn't play a supporter last, and he played Delinquent, but he didn't play a draw supporter last turn. So I'm banking on Jonathan not having a great hand here 
in his two card hand and he has to retreat and i think he's got a big wheel gx right so if he uses big wheel gx he's kind of conceding the turn right he's saying okay uh he concedes the energy drop because he retreated the espion and he's going to big wheel gx now i could big wheel gx in return if i do that then he could potentially attach the double colorless energy and have himself uh a very nice knockout, which would be very tough for me. But I think I do have to big wheel GX here. It's just uh, my hand is too bad. I didn't I didn't top deck out of it. So if he's got the DCE knockout on my Drampa, I'm just in a very compromising situation. But I do have a lot of damage on board. Uh, my board position is set up. I'm feeling confident. I can pull out of this one. I've got some energy drops as well. My hope is that just somehow in these 10 cards, there is not a double colorless energy for Jonathan to capitalize on this moment here where he stuck me with the crazy delinquent just out of nowhere, removing my entire hand with the Garbodor. I felt kind of delinquent safe with the Instructor Rangaroo on my bench. He didn't have Garbodor up. I mean, uh, what are the odds I get delinquent in here with the Garbodor? And sure enough, he just had it like that. And uh, we got into a very awkward exchange where we just have to both big wheel GX. Now, his hand's getting smaller. I imagine if the double colorless energy was in that hand, he would have dropped it already onto the Drampa GX. So I'm thinking that I might have just skated away here unscathed. He's got an N, only five cards to find that double colorless energy. And I'm hoping he's looking at the same five cards he just had in his hand before that end. Me, on the other hand, I find a way better hand. My big wheel GX hand was not that great at all. I've got DCE in this hand. I've got N. I've got Ultra Ball. This is all I want. If the Drampa lives through the turn, I think I just win. It, it just feels like the momentum at that point would be completely in my favor. I've got a heavily damaged Espeon GX on the bench. Drampa GX taken out of the equation. And I have to think here, he's taken long enough. He did not find that double colorless energy off the big wheel and off the end. I mean, what a crazy, crazy exchange. A uh, perfect opportunity to punish me here. And with a psychic drop on the second Drampa GX, he has to right his edge. And I am really excited about this turn. I've got the DC already. And this is how I know he didn't have it because I have the DC and it's going to be the first thing I play. I know I'm taking the knockout on that Drampa GX. And he's got a fully loaded bench now. So my Zorks are hitting even more damage than uh you know than they have been in games previous i got a zorg break that i'm setting up as well and i can either research yep research is going to be the play here i don't think i want to end jonathan only has a hand of three so we're going to research and see seven more cards and just continue to set up our zorgs on the bench and just try to find our game winning lysanders i might also just hold this because versus seeker i could bring up you know something else but uh, i actually opt to end here i'm gonna end myself to six which is fine and I think that uh, even though we're putting Jonathan back up to five, it's still uh, still reasonable, and I get a lot more cards in my hand. So we're we're chilling here. We're just going to berserk for this knockout. And the sketchy thing about Jonathan's board state at this point is if he comes up and berserks my Drampa, then I have Zorark on my bench, which can mind jack berserk his Drampa. And all I have to do is use Oracorio to ping that Espeon GX on his bench for game set and match that would just be it so i'm looking at his board uh, i've got two more gx's i want to take out he can disrupt that plan by using trash lance so that's going to be jonathan's main goal here is to start trading trash lance garbodors here and hopefully taking knockouts on my gx's with his non gx's so we'll see if he's able to piece together the trash lance garbodor this turn and also i'm not entirely sure how many item cards I have in the discard pile at this point, but that uh, that could be a big deal if, if I don't have that many in the discard pile. I don't think that I've played too many um, cards, so if I'm able to really keep that count low, and he actually just has to put up this Trampa and Righteous Edge, Jonathan is drawing terribly right now. I mean, absolutely terribly. I have a clear advantage here. I've got Special Charge can throw two double colorless back into my deck. Choice Ban on Zorg Break. Another Zorg, an Ultra Ball. And I'm just going to research going for the Berserk Knockout here. If I can find that double colorless back, I'm going to take 
a huge knockout on the Strampa GX, leaving Jonathan with almost nothing left on his board. He's got a highly damaged Espeon GX. I decided to leave the Oricorio in my deck in case I want to use the Oricorio to take the final knockout on the Espeon GX on Jonathan's bench. So I got the Berserk knockout here, and with just two prizes remaining, all I have to do is either Lysander knock out the Espeon or he finds that Oricorio, and I can use the Revelation Dance attack in order to get my three damage counters onto that Espeon GX. So I'm not thinking that there's much hope left for Jonathan. However, there is a route. He could end me to two. He could come up with Trash Lanch and start taking some big key knockouts with Trash Lanch, Garbodor. He does have five prizes remaining. So even if he were to take back-to-back -back GX knockouts, I would still have another turn to draw out of whatever situation I was in. Uh, but he does have Trash Lanch knockout here. He does not have a way to disrupt my hand, though. And I am just going to have either teammates or Verse Seeker for Lysander for game, a bunch of different ways that I can end the game on this Espeon GX. So well played to Jonathan. It was a pleasure. And top eight is completed. We've got either Mind Jack or Foul Play, either one. We're just going to Mind Jack for the knockout and win the series after a tight game two there where I mysteriously retreated to Drampa instead of taking a knockout, able to seal the deal in game three of the top eight match, moving on to top four next. I'll be posting my top four match shortly. Thank you all so much for watching the video. Make sure to like the video, sub to the channel, ring that bell. And if you're interested in retro format tournaments, make sure to check out the Pokestats Discord. I'll link it in the description below. I'll also have a playlist in the description below of all of my matches so far in this 2017 tournament. If you want to catch up on any of the previous rounds that you may have missed, Really looking forward to the top four match and hoping that I'll be able to take home the whole thing. There is some prize money for the top finishers in this tournament on the line here. So definitely some high stakes matches and it is a ton of fun. So I definitely recommend it. 2017 is one of my favorite formats of all time. You can tell the back and forth nature of these games, very engaging. And I really like the micro decisions that each turn has available to it, giving you plenty of opportunities to interact with and and really play a very intriguing match with your opponent so thank you all so much for watching the video hopefully you're enjoying this 2017 series that we are doing make sure to check out fullgripgames.com for all your trading card game singles as well as fullgripcodes.com for instant ptcgo code delivery supporting the shop at fullgrip games directly supports the content that i create here on tricky gym so thank you guys all so much for shopping at fullgrip and i'll catch you next time peace